Hello and a very warm welcome on behalf of NTI Audio. Today we are talking about testing of distributed audio systems. My name is Markus Becker and I am assisted today by Bruno Nitsch, who is mainly taking care of your questions. The contents that we have prepared for you start with a overlook on the motivation why we have to do these testings, what is the key issue of this webinar, followed by the explanation of some technical terms like phase, power factor or impedance. We will also say some words about volume control of the involved loudspeakers and give you some information and recommendations regarding the test setup and procedure. We have also prepared a practical presentation for you and will after that give you, provide some hints and tips. On this slide you see some examples of places where you will find distributed audio systems. The purpose is always the same. You want to address the people in these places with information or with emergency advice. And for that purpose you need a system that is simple to handle and where you can immediately address all the, the whole public. We have already had a webinar on the issue of speech intelligibility and for that reason in this webinar today we are focusing on the electric verification of these speaker systems. Let us take a look on the basic design of such a distributed speak, uh, audio system. The purpose or the goal is to use one or only few amplifiers to drive as many loudspeakers in parallel as possible. Well, the challenge in this setup comes from the impedance or the resistance of the wires that are connecting the amplifier with the loudspeakers because in these wires you have a certain power loss. The power loss can be calculated with this formula. It is the voltage across these wires or these um, resistances multiplied by the current that flows through it. And if we apply Ohm's law, you can see that if we replace the voltage by R times I, so you have the lo power loss is the resistance multiplied by the square of the current, you can see that the current plays a key role in this power loss. If we find a solution to reduce the current, then we will dramatically reduce the power loss. And that is the approach of a distributed audio system. By introducing a transformer, which increases the output voltage of the amplifier, we have a much higher output voltage here, and introducing again transformers at every loudspeaker which reduces this voltage back to the operating voltage, we can reduce the current here in this system and that means we are reducing the power loss in the wires. In practice there are some standardized voltages uh, for distributed audio systems. Here the um, bold, in bold characters you will find the most frequently used voltages for distributed audio systems starting at 70.7 volt up to 140 volt. Well, when we uh, talk about distributed audio systems and testing them, it is very important to understand a couple of technical terms. And one of them is the relationship between the voltage, current and the power. In this sketch I have an AC voltage and current, the blue and red curve. Um, but in reality you will always face a more complex situation because there is a phase shift between the voltage and the current. And this phase shift re um, results in a more complex calculation of the power. The power is now a combination of the real part or the active power and the reactive power 
which basically comes from the inductance or the capacitance of the system. And these two components together give us the apparent power. Please notice that the apparent power is expressed in volt ampere, whereas the real power or the active power is expressed in watt and the reactive power in VAR. You may notice that this triangle here has an angle phi which is the same as the phase shift up here. And this angle or this phase phi plays an important role as well because we may express what we call the power factor. This is the real or active power divided by the apparent power. And if we are talking about a pure sine wave as test signal, we can also express this power factor as a cosine of this angle phi. What is also important to keep in mind is that the apparent power S is the power that has to be provided by the amplifier. So this is the measure that we need to know when we are testing or verifying the system. Another aspect is that the impedance of the system, the complex impedance that looks almost the same or is uh, combined almost the same way as the power. Here we have the complex impedance which is the combination of the real part and the imaginary part. All three impedances, by the way, are expressed with the same unit with ohm. So it is very important always to indicate whether we talk about the complex impedance, the real or the imaginary part. Same as with the power triangle here, this angle phi is the phase shift. How can we measure, how can we quantify the impedance Z or the apparent power S? Let us start with the impedance. Impedance is defined as the voltage divided by the current. So the voltage across the load divided by the current that flows through the load. What is important to know is this, that this impedance Z depends on the frequency. And let me give you an example on that. Here I have plotted the impedance response of a three-way loudspeaker in a 100 volt system. And you can see here on the y-axis the ohm, the complex impedance, and here on the x-axis is the frequency. And you see the dependency of the impedance from the frequency. As soon as we have determined the impedance that we can also express the apparent power S because S is the system voltage U squared divided by Z. And this is actually the way as most test instruments are calculating or measuring apparent power. They first determine the impedance and then calculate the apparent power out of that. What is important here as well is that this measurement can only be executed by using an AC signal. If you would try to determine these values with a DC voltmeter, you will fail because the DC voltmeter is not able to measure the true complex impedance of the system, neither uh, or the, the um, phase shift fee. And both parameters are essential for the correct ex expression of these values. In this table, I have now plotted the relations between the system voltage, the system impedance, and the amplifier power. Let me explain you on an example how to use that. Let us assume we have a 100 volt system. And our amplifier has a given output power of 75 watt. So by this Q, with these two um, parameters, we can determine that the maximum or the impedance of the system must be 133 ohm. You can also turn that around if we have a 100 volt system and the system impedance of 133 ohm, 
we need an amplifier which can drive minimum 75 watt. Another um, information that we can get out of this table is what I have highlighted here with green bars. If we are in the range of very low systems impedances, you may imagine that the impedance or the resistance of the wires plays a more and more important role because the overall system impedance is the combination of the loudspeakers and the cables. So if we are in this range here with the green highlighted uh, part, then you must be very careful to use a cable, a wire with a wide cross section in order to minimize the resistance of the connecting wires. Or if we express it in another way, it is better to have a system with a higher voltage, higher system voltage, because here you rarely encounter this problem of low system impedances. So let us summarize. And what is very important, this expression here of the amplifier output power is done in watt, whereas, as mentioned before, we need the apparent power S for the determination of the true performance of the amplifier. And we can get that with this formula, so the uh, real or the active power of the amplifier is the apparent power multiplied by the power factor. So here you see why we need to measure the power factor as well. Second, as mentioned before, the total impedance here, system impedance, is the combination of the loudspeakers and the cable. And third point, if we want to am um, amend the, or the, the loudspeaker, sorry, the loudspeaker impedance or power depends on the transformer tap. What does that mean? Let me explain that on the next slide. You remember that we are driving several loudspeakers from one single amplifier. So, of course, we may amend the overall output power of the amplifier over the volume knob, but that would apply to all loudspeakers. Maybe we want to amend the volume of one single or a few loudspeakers only. How can we do that? For that purpose, uh, loudspeakers in a distributed audio system typically have several tabs at their transformers. For instance, here on the secondary side of the transformer, there are a couple of tabs and you may select which one you want to use for your loudspeaker. These tabs are typically identified by power indications. So here, for instance, I have selected the three watt tab. And by this way, you can individually adapt the power and by that, the sound pressure level of the corresponding a loudspeaker. Here I have just an example of a 100 volt loudspeaker with these the four taps and the corresponding indicators. Now let us take a look at the test setup and the test procedure. The first issue that needs to be considered always when you work with distributed audio systems keep in mind that there are pretty high voltages in the system. So be careful, please. When you want to execute a measurement, the first step is always to disconnect the amplifier. Then you may connect your test instrument, but still there is a certain risk that possibly an external voltage is still present at these wires. So it is important to protect your test instrument. And that can be done by applying an overvoltage protection plus some fuses here in the connecting wires. That way you may assure that your test instrument will not be harmed in case of an external high voltage. Second, talking about the test parameters. Uh, now referring to the Emma Pro signal generator from NTI Audio, you have a certain range where you can um, adjust the output voltage of the test instrument. We recommend to start at 0 dBU, which is, if you are not so acquainted with this unit, 
this is in the range of about one volt, a little bit less, but it's a good starting voltage. Second, talking about the frequency, we would recommend to start at about one kilohertz, but as mentioned before, because the impedance and the power of the system depends on the frequency, you may also adjust other frequencies in this range from 30 hertz to, one, 10, to 10 kilohertz. What are the typical tests that are executed on distributed audio systems? One of them is to determine the headroom of a system. And that means that, for instance, if you have connected a number of loudspeakers to an amplifier, you may want to add more loudspeakers. And you have to answer the question, how many more loudspeakers can I add, can I connect to this, uh, loud, to, to this amplifier? And the answer is you have to compare the specified performance, output power of the amplifier with the already installed power of the system. So by measuring this system power and comparing it to the amplifier specification, you may determine the headroom of that system. Another typical test would be to verify the performance of a single loudspeaker maybe because you have uh, lost the specification sheet or maybe because the uh, loudspeaker is behaving a little bit awkward and you want to know whether it is still working fine. Acceptance tests are other typical applications. For instance, after the installation of a distributed audio system, you want to verify the performance and document it in order to have a proof that your work has been done correctly. Maybe you also have to double check the system from time to time. If you remember the cruise ship, the cruise ship comes back from a journey and you have to verify is the system still working correctly. So you have to measure it, you have to test it and compare the results to the status before it started the journey. Last but not least, if you encounter any problems in your system, Testing is always a good measure to identify the root cause and hopefully find the uh, solution to the problem. So let me swap over to the practical presentation. I have here on my desk an MR Pro, which is connected to my PC. And by using a special software, I'm able to show you the content, the screen content of that MR Pro. Furthermore, I have connected a 100 volt loudspeaker to my Emma Pro. Here you can see the screen content and I will now, in addition, show you on a small webcam what I am doing during this presentation. So possibly at the beginning, when you start your MR Pro, you have here a sine wave, the generator mode with a sine wave, one kilohertz. Um, the first thing you do is you start the impedance test. I unmute my MR Pro and it gives me the result of, it, of the impedance measurement, 890 ohm with a phase of 4, 24 degree. As mentioned before, this impedance depends on the frequency. Now let me amend the frequency. I'm actually turning it down to, for instance, 200 Hertz. And you can see it used to be 890. Now it's 790. So the impedance has decreased at the lower frequency. When I increase the frequency, for instance, here to 8 kilohertz, you see I have a much higher impedance. It's now 2.4 kilo ohm and also the phase has changed to 77 degree. Well, let me get back to one kilohertz. And, and now I'm changing the tab of the loudspeaker. 
you can see I had 190 kilo ohm now 890 ohm now it's 1.6 kilo ohm and every time I change the tab I get the corresponding result for this impedance. If I want to verify now the power of that loudspeaker I can do that simply for instance by pressing the wave button on the Emma Pro and selecting power. Now here you see the power at the corresponding tab. What is very important is that you adjust the reference voltage correctly. The Emma Pro has to know at which system voltage you are operating this loudspeaker. So here I have selected 100 volt. I could choose another voltage, just the standardized ones that I showed you on the table before. Let's stick with 100 volt. And here you see I'm showing the power factor. Alternatively, I could also show you the phase shift. Maybe you have noticed that down here in this balance indicator, there seems to be an asymmetry. This indicator is more to pin number two instead of being in the middle where it should be. The reason is because I have actually manipulated, intentionally manipulated this loudspeaker. And when you place the cursor here on the RL, the load impedance indicator, you can see this asymmetry between pin 2 and pin 1. So this is intentional. Or say it in other words, this gives you the opportunity to detect possibly wrong connected loudspeakers as well. Just for proof, I'm going to disconnect now this loudspeaker and connect another one, which is actually symmetric. You see that immediately. It's of course a different value, but you see we have nice symmetric impedances at the two pins and the same phases. So as you can see with this instrument, with these um, many information here on the screen, you have a very nice tool to qualify the performance of your system. Let me get back to my presentation. And I would like to provide you some hints and tips. The first one is when you design or install a system, there is a rule of thumb. Generally, it is recommended to install many small loudspeakers rather than few large ones. The reason is very simple. With a better distribution of small loudspeakers, you usually get a more homogeneous sound field in your venue instead of having just three or four large and loud loudspeakers. They are more inhomogeneous in the sound field and that has a negative impact on the speech intelligibility. So getting or it's in realizing a system with a good speech intelligibility would rather require a larger number of small loudspeakers. I have introduced to you the Emma Pro. The Emma Pro is a very versatile, very powerful test instrument with a built-in server loop output. What does that mean? Um, you as the operator of the system, you adjust the output voltage of the Emma Pro. And you are of course assuming that the actual output voltage is the one that you have selected. However, the actual output voltage may depend on the load impedance. And the Emma Pro now has an output stage which automatically regulates the output voltage, the real output voltage, in a way that it complies to the selected one. So there is no difference. However, it may happen that, for instance, if the load impedance is very low, the output voltage cannot be achieved by the Emma Pro. 
And in that case, there is a built-in overload indicator. There's a frame which starts blinking and shows you that the target output voltage cannot be reached. This is a very powerful feature. Furthermore, as mentioned before, if you want to connect an MR Pro to a distributed audio system, we strongly recommend to use the corresponding protective adapter, which includes the overvoltaged um, protection and the fuses. Another hint refers to the acoustical verification of your test system. Um, for instance, if you want to verify the sound pressure level of the installed loudspeakers, but you know that there is some um, people walking around there, you have to execute this measurement in the presence of public. There is a trick to do that, and that is by using a 20 kilohertz tone, we call it a pilot tone, and to applying a 19 kilohertz high pass filter in the XL2. And this way you can measure the performance of the loudspeaker without the people walking by hearing that, most of them will not hear it, and you also filter out the noise that these people are generating, the chatting and the talks and the walking. This is just to show you how the setup looks like. You are using the Emma Pro as sine wave generator, 20 kilohertz, and the XL2, you select the RMS measurement function and activate the 19 kilohertz high pass filter. Furthermore, Another hint refers to the individual power adjustment of the loudspeakers. Keep in mind by doubling the electric driving power of a loudspeaker would correspond to an approximate increase of the sound pressure level of 3 dB. Just a side note, we have already held a Another webinar on the topic of speech intelligibility, acoustical testing of evacuation systems. You will find the recording of this webinar on our website. Well, I'm at the end of this presentation. Just now I would like to point out the uh, subsidiaries that we have um, all over the world. So if you have any additional question, now or in future, you may address us here in the headquarter or our subsidiaries or our independent partners that you will find in all the relevant countries worldwide. Thank you very much for today. Have a good time and see you soon. Bye-bye.